Okay, this is uh, uh, called What If There Is No War? Okay, I was lying in bed this morning thinking about the war going on in Ukraine, the death of so many good people in that fighting, and the foolish escalation of war. What is the matter with our leaders? I kept thinking. Why do they keep pushing Russia, poking the bear? After wrestling with these questions, I decided to get into an altered state to see if I could stop the war. There are states of consciousness that are very, very powerful and in which matter responds immediately to thought. So I wasn't sure I could get into that state, and I wasn't being grandiose. I just thought, well, I'll give it a try. I began moving toward a heightened state of being, preparing my thoughts to be able to express exactly what I wanted. And I arrived at the thought, let there be no war. It probably should have been let there be peace, but it was let there be no war. As this wish began to percolate through me, a stream of questions arose. Well, if there is no war, well, how will anything be resolved? What is your future with Joe Biden and people like him in control? What if you had to live in a world of corruption forever? Who would release the children from their tortures? With deep fake video and clones everywhere, how would you know what's real? These questions stopped me in my tracks and suddenly I could see and feel the value of war. It is decisive. It removes many argumentative people and ideas at least for a while. How could we return to normal and live in peace if there was no war to settle the issues? Would we just languish in confusion, lies, and resentment forever? Was war a valid way of dealing with big problems? Or was it just another way of moving things around, shifting suffering to someone else? Was it shifting the fear and the pain of criminal leaders trapped by their greed and pride under the soldiers trapped in war games set up by those so-called leaders? And what about the children trapped in adrenochrome centers? Who would end their suffering? Or was that still a modern taboo topic? Now I was backing out of my intent to get into an altered state and end war. Somehow, I needed to think through things a little more. I began to wrestle with the idea of war. What if we lost? I envisioned life being set back a century or two when we were hauling water from the well, cooking over fires, and had no air conditioning at all. If Russia got thoroughly pissed and decided to bomb the U.S., We stood to lose everything, our country, our sovereignty, our progress. We, the people, would lose. If the U.S. decided to come out of the war closet and stop hiding behind Ukraine and NATO, they might bomb the Russians, setting them back a couple of centuries, which would mean that we, the people, have lost again because those same corrupt leaders would still be in control. It was now clear we were in a lose or lose situation. Regardless of outcome, we would not win. Suddenly war was not looking like any kind of reasonable solution. Did we need to lose our country, our way of life and our sovereignty in order to win freedom from the cabal? Or would we just find we had been sold to another master just as bad? Especially if they turned out to be royally angry for having caused all of this. 
If desperate times provoke desperate efforts, where was the desperate effort going to come from? Turning this around in my mind, I wondered if we could substitute the word heroic for desperate and then ask, where was the heroic effort going to come from? If we set aside the idea that war is going to fix things, because obviously it isn't going to relieve us or fix anything, then what are the choices? There do not appear to be many. Let's make a list of options. We will put war at the top because war is what's in our face right now. If we don't want war, we could use diplomacy perhaps, but why would our leaders in Washington, D.C. suddenly begin to listen to anyone when they've been ignoring us and everyone else for years now? The D.C. deafness brought a moment of inner silence. Then why, in a republic based on representation, were the representatives ignoring us? What was wrong with this picture? This was our system, our country, our, uh, I was going to say our planet, but then another voice in my head was asking, are you sure? What makes it your system, your country, or your planet? Do you have any proof? Do you have any paperwork to show it belongs to you? How would you know if someone had stolen it away? How would you know? What evidence could you point to that it's still yours? Or what signs would you see if it had been taken from you? I stopped to consider this. Our entire world was based on agreements, based on assumptions about how the world was. All of it. The agreements and the assumptions were made up out of thin air by us. What made the agreements real? Because we said so. What made the assumptions real? Because we said so. The paperwork was just an attempt to formalize and express what we were making up out of thin air in which case war could be thought of as fighting over thin air. Now a new thought occurred to me. What if our assumptions were not correct? Would that invalidate our agreements? Or would it just mean that we would end up looking like ignorant fools holding the bag? I went back to the question of what signs would we see if our system, country, or planet had been taken from us. Systems might be a dime a dozen, and countries were always being reorganized as different people were elected to power. We could roll with those kinds of changes. But what about a planet? What would be the signs that a planet had been overtaken or commandeered by someone else? Just asking that question brought a small cascade of scenes and gut warnings. Planes spraying the skies with ungodly chemicals reported to allow unlimited communication. But communication between who or what? Masked people injecting chemicals into bodies that then suffer and die early, unnatural deaths. Chemicals being infused into the water supply. Governments making rule after rule to destroy lives, farms, small businesses, personal power and rights while stacking the legal deck so that the common man always loses. Chemicals being sprayed onto food in massive doses. Medicine that does more harm than healing. The murder of millions of chickens, pigs, and cows using the excuse that they're sick. Destruction of whole cities using laser weapons. 
kidnapping, cloning, and torture of children to produce adrenochrome. An array of mask-wearing leaders and doubles who pretend to be someone they are not. Election scams keeping certain groups in power and the common people in the dark. Media that lies and lies and lies. A court system that is blatantly kangaroo. An endless string of expensive and destructive wars. What kind of people would do these things? Indeed, what kind of people? This now became a serious consideration. Are the people doing these things the humans of planet Earth? The huge majority of people I know do not like what's happening. And they would never do such things themselves. And they don't understand why anyone else would do such things either. Would the gentle people of planet Earth plan, organize, and carry out the things we were being subjected to? Why? What for? I was reminded of Donald Trump's comment that what we were fighting was, quote, so much bigger than anyone could imagine. So how big do we let the imagining go? Who or what has gotten hold of the U.S. government? Is the war I was fretting about in Ukraine a whole different kind of war than we have imagined? Is that why I have this constant feeling that the media, even the alternative media, is not getting to the real issue? They're looking at the situation through old eyes, old filters, old assumptions, and their reports often strike me as shallow or off somehow. I'm now back to wrestling with assumptions. Maybe we need some desperate assumptions. What if the war in Ukraine is necessary because we're fighting something beyond our wildest imaginings? What if the people making the decisions in Washington, D.C., are some kind of hybrid humans created in the labs of Ukraine, and they have the same love of our planet that we do. Who hybridized them? Where would their loyalties be? Now I'm not just wrestling with assumptions, I'm grasping at straws and back where I started, wishing there would be no war. This drags me back around to those big questions. How will we resolve things? What is our future with Biden and people like him? If we don't want to live in a world of corruption, what would we have to do about this? Who will rescue the children? And how will we know what is real? War is not the answer. It is an answer, one of many. Resolving things requires, first of all, to know what you're trying to resolve. And we don't know that yet. Why don't we know it yet? Because we don't want to take responsibility for letting ourselves know. Knowing is a place of power. It leads naturally to action. We are at a moment when we can see the setup being made, the punches being thrown, the responses being thrown back, and the march toward war. But if that is a lose-lose proposition for us, is that the way we want to resolve things? It's not what I want. Now the words of Don Juan come back to me from the past about handling a really difficult enemy. He taught that when you found yourself caught or enslaved in a situation where you had no power and no escape, your task was to watch, wait, study your enemy, understand his goals, and learn his weaknesses. You were to learn his natural tendencies for response in differing situations, 
So you could play upon those tendencies when the right moment came. What was that right moment? It would be a moment in which your patience and watchfulness paid off. A moment in which a door opened and you would be able to use your knowledge of how to play with the natural responses of your oppressor while hitting him in his weak spot forcing his hand in a way that takes him down and sometimes out. We are almost there. We are still watching, still learning, still looking for weak spots in the enemy, which unfortunately looks a lot like the people in DC. We are heading toward release with a bonus of finally understanding what true power is and how to use it. Keep this in mind. The corollary to know thyself could be thought of as know thy enemy and be prepared to take action that makes sense to you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>